bless you, appreciate you. Love you. Talking about the, the faithfulness and the goodness and the mercy of God this morning. 
Oh, the Lord, and, and what I've heard God in the Sunday school hour this morning, I thought the Lord's been faithful. He was faithful to Mary. He was faithful to Joseph. He's faithful to the believer this morning. Oh, but I pray that our hearts and our minds be open just for a little while. God, may we see your word come alive. Father, the fullness this morning. I pray you speak to the hearts and souls of your people. May you encourage them and challenge them this morning. Father, that one that's wayward, God, I pray that be drawn to you today. Father, that one that may be an unbeliever and lost and does not know you as their personal Savior. I pray today would be the day of salvation for them. God, do the work that needs to be done. May you get glory to yourself. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Be seated. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word this morning. I, I thought about this. And I'll get right into the message this morning, the introduction, whatever the mess I'm about to make. But I want to say that I thought about this this morning, the choir. I was saying, and I you know how we are. Uh, we uh, hear amazing grace to the to the joy of the world. That, that sounds pretty good, you know, because it ain't just the same old amazing grace. And uh, I, you hear uh, the choir sing, uh, I know my name is there. You thank the blessed heart. Well, Paul knows that's just one of the choirs real good on. Let's just sing it again. But uh, let me just say this this morning. I've got amazing grace. It never gets old. No matter what time you've sung to this morning, it's been grace that's brought us thus far. And grace will be us all that I'm going to say this morning. If you take the joy and the faith that your name is written there, there probably ain't one word I could utter this morning going to cause you to rejoice. And then I learned across the congregation, I've seen this look on people's faces. Like, how can it be that real? And the one thing I know to say this morning, he is faithful this morning. I'm glad it's not doing anything I did that my name's written there. There's nothing you'll be able to do to get your name written there. But thank God because of him. I'm glad that I know that I know that I know that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Amen. The preachers are really that good. Oh, it's better than this. It's better than this. Amen. I, I want to give you a few things. That's why I got four things this morning I want to share with you. Number one this morning, let's get right into it. Now, I guess by way of introduction, you got to understand now as you look at the fact that uh, here we are in 2 Timothy chapter number 2. We know that uh, Paul's already wrote one epistle to Timothy. And here we are in the second epistle of Paul's writing to Timothy. And uh, for those of you that uh, read your Bible and know that uh, Timothy's not actually the son of Paul, but Paul refers to him as a son. The reason he does that is because Paul took Timothy under his wing. You see, Paul's new. If I can say it this way, Paul's lived on the other side of the spectrum. Paul's lived on the other side of the tracks. Paul's I've been the persecutor. Paul's been the that's taking seriously within himself that I'm the greatest among the sinners. Paul said, I don't deserve what I have. And Paul said, I have the things of this world. And thank God I crave the men for the riches of the Lord. And uh, Paul says uh, to Timothy, he said, hey, listen, uh, you're going to have to fight the good fight. You're going to have to be a good steward. And uh, down the next chapter here in the book we this morning, he tells you have to preach the word. I mean, he charges him to do that. And he said, there's going to come a day that they won't endure sound doctrine, but uh, they'll have to themselves uh, teachers having in your ears, and uh, they want to hear that sounding brass, and that tinkling cymbal, uh, uh, that that makes them feel good. Boy, would you not agree this morning that uh, what Paul says exactly uh, where we're living in the day and hour we are today is what? I mean, uh, I think we said it last Sunday morning that there used to be a saying that uh, that convicts me, but we change that to that offends me. Uh, uh, it's no longer convic conviction. Uh, uh, it's offensive. But can I say it this morning, if it's recorded in the Word of God, well, I want to thank you for the convicting power of the Holy Ghost this morning. I'd have never got saved if I hadn't got lost uh, and realized I needed a Savior this morning. And, and so uh, you've got to understand now, Paul, he was not... Uh, he was not just welcomed in uh, uh, by the disciples, even though there had been a change made in his life. It makes you think a lot of times maybe some of those disciples and apostles were bad, you know, because Paul wasn't just welcome in. They weren't just excited to see Paul and, uh, because he knew the old man he used to be. But uh, there's a man by the name of Barnabas that brought him and represented him to the other apostles and, uh, and, and the disciples. He said, wait a minute, uh, this ain't the same old man uh, that it used to be the same Lord we're following and uh, the same Lord we're apostles of, disciples of. Uh, uh, this is who he really is. And, uh, he desired this so upon the word of Barnabas. Uh, uh, they accepted him in. Uh, and boy, aren't you glad this morning uh, uh, for the change that the Lord uh, uh, made in your heart and your life. And you're not the same that you used to be. Uh, but the credit goes to the Lord. Yeah, yeah, man. Right. So if you look at this and then you find out how greatly the Lord used Paul. Paul, uh, I guess, uh, other than the Lord Jesus. 
there is uh, that you'll ever read about. And then uh, uh, most of our New Testament Bible comes from this same man uh, uh, by the name of Paul. And we find now, we picked up in the second epistle that he's writing to Timothy. And, uh, there's a whole lot that I could read there too. If you have time this afternoon, I'm just going to read chapter number two where we're at. And uh, anyway, to make a long uh, introduction as short as I can this morning, uh, uh, the Bible gets uh, here in the second Timothy chapter two. And if you look verse number one, he said, Thou therefore, my son, uh, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So there he is. He's calling Timothy that son. And the reason being is because he's invested in him. And he's bringing him under his wing. And he's, he's encouraging him. And he said, verse number 3, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. What's he saying, preacher? Uh, he said, it ain't always going to be a bed of roses. Uh, he said, but it is worth fighting for. It, uh, it is worth enduring. Uh, and you get down there in verse 11, it said, it's a faithful saying. Uh, uh, for if we be dead with him, uh, we shall also live with him. Uh, and uh, Brother Marty, I mean, that's just what I'm saying. I mean, the Lord just knows how to line it up. Brother Marty said, I'm not sorry uh, that I trust the Lord. And you know why he's not sorry this morning? Uh, well, he spoke about that mire that is in, and the Lord bring him out, set him upon a solid rock, and establish him. You know what that means this morning? That means he's died with him. But if you see him stand and testify this morning, he's a living with him. Oh, I'm going to say it this morning, if you ever died out to the old man and begin to live with God, I'm glad there's nothing to be sorry for this morning. In fact, one thing I'll be sorry for is we didn't do it soon. Or if we're sitting here this morning and we're still playing in that, nesting in that, boy, we ought to be sorry that we just don't simply sell out and just live for him. And I mean, just fall in love with him this morning. Look, verse number 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he'll also deny us. I mean, that's just pretty simple this morning. He said, if you think this suffering is anything, he said, just play. Matter of fact, he said, it's not even to be compared to the glory that shall be set before us. Oh, notice this. I'm going to give you this verse. I'll preach the one I've been done this morning. Verse for verse. If, ye, if we believe not, yet he abideth faith, they cannot deny him faith. I want to say this this morning, that's for an introduction. Whether you believe it or not, doesn't change the fact that he's still faithful. Amen. Amen. Right. Just because you and I believe it, don't make him faithful. Right. He's faithful is the reason you and I got to believe it. Amen. Amen. I mean, just think about this this morning. Some of us, many of us sit here this morning. Matter of fact, I only know just a few in the last 21 years of pastor here that accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. The very first time he came to him. You know what that means this morning? That means the rest of us would have never been here today if he had not been faithful. Thank God he came again. Somebody want to shout about that. And when you rejected him, thank God he came again. And when you turned him away, thank God he came again. Because he's faithful. Now notice it. I want to say number one, he's faithful in our sin. Amen. He said, if, if, would you believe it or not? Yeah. Notice what the Bible said. If you believe not, yet he abide the faith. He cannot deny himself. Now there's one thing this morning. I mean, uh, there's a few things that I'm finding out. The older I get, there's more things uh, that get under my skin and bother me than used to. I guess I'm getting quieter in my old age. <laughs> but there's, there's just a few things I've never been able to stand. One of them's been a liar or a thief. Now, if you'd be honest, everybody sitting here this morning, one time in our life, we've probably been both. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't some of us still having a hard time? <laughs> <laughs> we'll go on. <laughs> if you need something, I'll do my best to help you get it. But let's not skip it. Right, right. Amen. And the truth is all the thing will set you free. I mean, you can tell a lie, boy, it looks good. But I promise you, if you don't tell the truth, you're going to have to tell another one. Yeah, Everybody in the middle knows I'm telling the truth. We just come through Christmas. Every one of these lies. Every one of them. <laughs> Every one of us. We lied all month long. That word, the presents were, or they weren't, or we didn't buy that, we didn't buy this, or I'll take it back. <laughs> Well, my family can attest to it. If you say you're something, then be it. And if you ain't, it's not. Amen. But don't say 
last message on the Sunday morning, uh, the last Sunday morning of 2020. Boy, I remember when this pandemic started. I mean, I mean, they was idiots. I'm just going to say it. Went on social media and said, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. And then you see other posts and they're doing that. You, you, you're just killing your testimony. Yeah. We'd just be better off to be quiet than to tell a lie. Now here we are, we're two years sitting on that day. Now what in the world are you going to do? I just want to say this. I'm glad I can stand here on the last Sunday morning of 2020 and tell you that through the whole pandemic and through uh, 2021, excuse me. I'm not going to play it again. <laughs> through 2021, last Sunday morning, 2021, see where you're behind, right? <laughs> And, uh, and I'm glad I can stand here and tell you this morning uh, that through 2020 2021, uh, I'm glad that there's not one uh, a part of a the news particle. Uh, there's not one part of a vaccine. There's not one part of a mask. Uh, there's not one part of gloves. Uh, there's not one thing going on in the White House uh, that has caused God uh, to change this morning. Uh, I'm glad uh, he is counted and faithful uh, in his word this He's the same yesterday and today and forevermore. Can I say it doesn't matter what you and I see coming or what we don't see coming. It will not change the faithfulness of the Lord. Today's faith in our sin. First John 1 9 says, if we confess our sin, He is faithful to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us. From all over us, I'm glad that's before you get born again. That's if you mess up after you get born again. I'm glad he's faithful this morning to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all of us. I think mean, the biggest problem is simply this. Many simply do not want to forgive. They don't want to be held against them. But they don't want to leave their sin. I told you many times before, especially in the last year or so, that Probably the greatest verse quoted, the greatest, uh, uh, the most uh, advertised verse. You'll see it held up at ball games. Uh, uh, you'll see it on church signs. It's on t-shirts. Uh, it's probably quoted more than any other verse in your Bible. It's John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But you go three verses down in the very same chapter uh, and the Bible said, but this uh, is the condemnation they said, me and red love darkness, red and light because their deeds were evil. It's not that the Lord can't save them. It's the fact that people don't want to get out of the darkness this far. Or up and all, are you glad that it goes you out of darkness into His glorious light? Amen. I'm going to say number one, He's faithful in our sin. Boy, aren't you glad He was faithful when He was a sinner? Yes, sir. Yeah, man, I mean, you didn't just wake up one morning and say, you know what? I believe I'm going to get saved today. Oh, but thank God this. The Holy Ghost didn't let you go to sleep. Yeah, man, he walked with it, wrestled with it all night, just like he did Jacob. And you said, oh, I wish you'd bless me. Oh, I wish you'd forgive me. And he said, I'm not doing it until you confess who you really are. Until you get tired of lying. Until you get tired of wandering in your sin. But thank God when you did. Oh, aren't you glad he was faithful? Think about that prodigal son over there in Luke, uh, chapter number 15. Boy, aren't you glad even in the hog pen. Boy, I thought about this this week. Boy, there's been many of people. Look across the church this morning. I know we've got some signal things, but there's a lot of empty views. There's a greater sickness in this pandemic we've been in. It's the sickness of sin. Well, my friend, this morning, they, they're in places this morning they thought they'd never be uh, entangled in things. They thought they'd never be involved in that young man. Uh, they must have had everything you'd ever need there in his father's house. Uh, but the Bible said he got to the place that he wouldn't have hustled the swine in him. Feel his bed. Oh, but aren't you glad there's a day in your life? Uh, oh, somebody ought to get glory. Uh, God ought to get glory from somebody. Uh, and listen, man, you can't be yourself. Uh, you can't be yourself. Uh, and realize, wait just a minute, this is as bad as I've ever been. And the Father had bread enough in this family. He said, I'm going to rise and go to my Father. I'm going to tell you. I've seen against him. I sat no more than be called by son. 
Maybe it's one out there so but guess what? He had a faithful father. There's a fatty calf. There's a brand new pair of shoes. There's a best robe. There's a ring to put on his finger. Hey, listen, he was going to call all his friends in. You know what Satan will tell you? You're going to embarrass yourself. You embarrass the church. You embarrass the preacher. Oh, but you know what he said? Hey, everybody come in. Don't worry about where he's been. I just want you to know my boys come home. He's faithful in our salvation. You realize this morning, if it were not for him, we wouldn't be here this morning. We only what we are by the Lord. Amen. Amen. Probably some of the other that all be quoted. We all know it like the back of our head this morning. Thank God for Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 2 10 said, For with the heart man believeth in righteousness. And with the mouth confessed is made into salvation. Oh, but don't leave out verse number 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Boy, aren't you glad that he is faithful in your salvation? Whenever you got convicted, you realized you was lost in the need of a Savior and could not save yourself. Boy, aren't you glad that the Lord Jesus Christ came to where you were, brought you up out of that horrible pit, said, Don't you come around and understand? Salvation. I love this. He's never lost a one. Matter of fact, he said that there's not a one that the Father has given him that he's lost this one. He's faithful. Matter of fact, Paul said it like this I know whom I have to leave and am persuaded that he is able to keep that I commune to him against that day. You know what that word persuaded means? It didn't just happen one time, but over and over and over again. Paul was proved by the Lord that he was faithful. Amen. Amen. The Lord proved to Paul over and over and over again that he was faithful. Amen. Notice this. I want you to see this morning. He's faithful in our salvation. Boy, aren't you glad this morning that whenever the troubles and the trials of this life come, there may be some things within our own flesh that may be shaken, within our own mind that may be shaken. But aren't you glad this morning that the foundation on which you stand uh, is a solid rock this morning? Uh, I'm glad it's the same rock you told Peter and built the church upon. Uh, I'm glad this morning uh, it is the same rock. Uh, and what's it? Excuse me. Whenever Jesus bowed his head, and he gave up the ghost uh, there at Calvary. Uh, and the Bible said the rocks did rip. You know what that was? That was a trembling of the power uh, of God. My friend, the Bible said uh, that the temple was ripped. Uh, uh, the pair of the temple was ripped from the top to the bottom. That was God saying that the Savior had came from heaven uh, down the earth. Uh, but thank God there's no more to sit in the bulls or a goat. Uh, but thank God one time uh, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, and he did it was applied uh, at the mercy seat of God uh, and is still to this very day the atonement for the sins of the world. What that is is faith in our salvation this morning. I want us to notice this. I have said in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3, verse 1. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish and keep your commitment. I'm glad you don't have to go there. You don't have to live that lifestyle. Why? Because he's faithful in our salvation this morning. Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 23 says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. You know what he said this morning? Let's not be wishy washy. If we say we got it, let's live like we got it. Amen. Amen. And if we ain't, let's get it. And when we get it, we want to live like we've got it. Amen. Notice this. He's faithful this morning in our sins. He's faithful this morning in our salvation. How about this? How many of us can say he's faithful in our sin? Yes, sir. Not only in our sins. Not only in our salvation. How about this? He's faithful in our sicknesses. Amen. The, the Bible records it in the Gospels this morning. Probably recorded. My favorite probably recorded. It's recorded in Matthew, Mark, and uh, John this morning, or Luke this morning. But my favorite probably recorded in, in Matthew, the one of the issue of blood. Michael said that the woman had the issue of blood. She said, I may but just touch. 
They hit on this God. Boy, she had faith. Let us see if you just get to where he is at. Hey, listen, this morning, I hope this will help you. A Thursday morning, we hit on a Thursday afternoon, we hit that funeral for uh, Brother Stephen Hammond's mother that asked you to been praying that uh, Brother Hillary Wood, the one we've been praying for this morning, 91 years old. I, I didn't know if he's going to be able to make it. And, uh, he let Brother Steve know earlier that morning he was going to be there. And, uh, he was sitting down whenever we, I, uh, I woke the family in. Uh, he was always sitting over there on the beach on the platform. And I walked over beside him. He had a cane. I saw his son helping him out of the car, helping him up on the step to get into the church. And I just leaned over and he was here. I said, Preacher, we sit beside of you. Uh, maybe I can just help you up when it's time to go to the pulpit. And, uh, he said, Why? If you want to. And they probably heard him in the back of the church when he told me that. So I just sit down beside him in there. And come time, that 91 year old man, he let go of the pulpit. He grabbed all that cane and he couldn't push himself up out of that, out of that beach. And I grabbed him by his arm and I took him up by his arm and had his Bible laid on top of my Bible. Walked him over to the pulpit and he grabbed a hold of it. And I hope this will help you this morning. And please don't, I don't discredit God's word at all. But I know why now my Bible said it's where I'll hide my heart. And I run my pursuit against God. Here's what I'm trying to do. He didn't have to open up his Bible to preach to him the gospel. He didn't open that pulpit. And he trembled all over the age of 91 years old. But you know what he did? He had the glory of God all over his body. And in his spirit, he said, I just beg God, let me preach one more time. I probably never did too. I said, Oh, I said you're preaching right now. Bring to Yeah. Here's what I'm trying to say. Whether it has, whether it is, whether it's on its way, you're gonna deal with sin. Whether it's on you physically or in your family. It's crazy. You're gonna deal with sin. I'm gonna say this is he's faithful. He said, if I could just get to him, I don't even have to touch him. If I could just get to the heel of his garment. I'll preach a message one of these days on H-E-A-M, H-I-M, no, listen to me. If I could just touch the heel of his garment. See, you know, what we don't understand a lot of times is just like living. Living, if, 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 I, if I spoon something out and live it, you know what I had to do this food? I had to throw it out. I couldn't go over and get some else because that living would contaminate. You might want to say amen right there. We've been living in it for two years. You may not have it, but somebody else had it. Touched it. You touched it. Now you have it. That's living. You got to throw it out. She said, if I could just touch him and his car. Boy, aren't you glad scripture speaking it works the same way? She didn't have to touch him, but if she just could just so, touch something he had already touched. Hey, listen to me this morning. I never actually got to lay my hands on Jesus. Hey, but listen, those things that was brought to me, thank God somebody else that had been touched by him. Thank God brought me things that God had breathed on. And God had his hand on. I don't know about you this morning, but I, I just had to believe that that Bible that I laid on top of my Bible Thursday morning, the same one I'm holding in my hand. God had breathed on that book I, a number of times while that old man read over it. I, and while he prayed over it. I, and all week long, or the rest of the week, I, every time I wrote my Bible, I, I felt like, I, oh, that I could feel what that old man I, was talking about. Yeah. That is faith in our sins. Matter of fact, a lot of times we think about sickness, we just think about getting sick and dying. Oh, there's a lot of sickness this morning. People's walking around with don't even realize it's God. Come on, brother. Right. Amen. There's a sickness of sin this morning that's far greater than the pandemic we're living in. Yes, sir. Maybe because of our, our history. Maybe because of our family. Maybe because of our past. There's a lot of things that we may not want to admit this morning. But can I say this? The greatest, the greatest place of keeping is the very place that we realize. There's a sickness. You gotta realize you need it. Yes, sir. Before you never get help from it this morning. I'm glad he's faithful in our sickness. Matter of fact, the Bible says this. The Bible said Jesus said amongst them. The disciples were there. The Bible said that they were thrown at him. In other words, there's a crowd, there's a pussy. And uh, 
That's a little of my third thing. Well, I'm not being credit. You can't get where you're going. I've been pushed around this place. That's what they're doing. They're throwing it. Jesus said, Who touched me? One of his disciples said, Lord, I've been looking around with this multitude. And you ask us who touched you? I mean, probably everybody in here that's, that's bumped up again, they touched you. Jesus said, Paul, oh, I perceive the virtues going out of me. Hey, you, you know what he's saying to that disciple? No, no, no. I'm not talking about just brush by me. Somebody just got hit. Right. Or aren't you glad that whenever he comes to you, whether it's in your sickness, whether it's in your sin or in your salvation, aren't you glad he didn't just brush by you? Oh, but thank God. There was virtue that came the way you were. And you know what it was. Yeah. last and all these on the Faith in our sin. Faith this morning, our salvation, faith in our sins. How about this this morning? What we've all been here. They would be there this morning. It's faith in our storm. No matter the situation, no matter the storm, physical, mental, spiritual, I'm glad the Lord is faithful in our storm. Matter of fact, I'll give you one of the, uh, the greatest that I find in the Word of God. There is, it's recorded in the book of John, chapter number 6. And the Bible said that the disciples had gone out in the midst of the sea. I mean, they've done just exactly what the Lord is asking to do. There they are out in the midst of the sea, but they find themselves in a storm. I mean, how many times in your Christian life? I mean, it seems like the more you try to read, the stronger the storm is. The more you want to pray, the stronger the storm is. The more you want your family to be bound together, the more the adversary tries to tear apart. And you feel like you're doing exactly what God wants you to do. I said that night there those disciples were. They were, they were trying to do exactly what the Lord had asked them to do. And they found themselves in the midst of the storm. I'd say for most people, if we be honest this morning, our storm that we're in right now is probably, probably more mental and spiritual than anything else. There's some things in the physical storms, but we could use that sickness this morning. The storm we're in right now is a nation. We're in a spiritual storm. We're in a spiritual warfare. It, it weighs down on your mental. It weighs down on your physical. It'll weigh on your spirit. I was said that while they were there in the midst of that storm, that Jesus went walking to them. Right out there in the midst of those waters. I mean, right in the midst of the storm, they perceived that as a spirit. Do you know what he said? He said, be not afraid. He was out of I be not afraid. Amen. Now I know you've heard me say this before, but it's still true today. You know the safest place to be in the, in the biggest hurricane, the biggest tornado, is in the eye of the storm. That's where it's the calmest. Can I say this morning, I'm glad we serve a Savior that is faithful this morning. Though everything around us looks like it's falling apart. Though our nation, though our government looks like it's falling apart. Though tonight, though today, if we be honest, if we be honest this morning, it looks like churches across America fall apart over the pandemic storm that we're in. You know what the Lord's doing? He's come walking to us on this very pandemic, on this storm. He said, I don't, have, I don't know where you're at. I know the Lord does. But no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, you know what he said this morning? Be not afraid. It is I. It's the calmest place you can be in the midst of the storm. He's in the eye of the storm of the Savior. He's the eye of your storm this morning. He's the eye of your situation, no matter what you're going through. If you just realize for the first time in your life, you know what, I'm lost under that floor, but he's made. If you realize this morning, you know what, I'm saved with the grace of God, but I live like I'm lost. I want you to know something. He's made. If you realize this morning there's sickness, it's spiritual, it's mental, it's physical this morning. Guess what? He's faithful. If you just feel like you're in a fog, you're in a storm this morning. Boy, it's got you disturbed. It's got you distraught. I want you to know so this morning. He's the safest place to be. Amen. In the midst of any storm this morning, he's standing in his eye. Be not afraid. Hands are bowed, eyes are closed. You're standing all across the house this morning. Please no one looking around. I wonder how many Christian people just want to gather around this all this morning and say, Lord, I just want to thank you for being faithful in every storm, in every situation, Lord, in every sickness. Thank God that I was a sinner in your faith. Thank God that I've got saved in your faith. Lord, I just want to thank you for your faithfulness this morning. 
God bless you, Father. People move. If you don't want to gather around the altar, you can find your pew. Right there and pray. God bless you, Father. Yes. Yes, thank God. Thank God. Maybe you're here this morning, nobody's looking around. I just want to pray for you this morning. You just slip your hand up and you say, Preacher, I don't know the Lord is my personal Savior. Never been saved by the grace of God. Preacher, I realize I'm lost in the need of a Savior. Please pray for me. You just slip your hand up this morning. Everyone, no one looking around. Thank you, son, for being honest. Nobody looking around. You slip it up right back there. Maybe you're here this morning. You say, Preacher, I know that I'm saved. I know that I'm saved. Preacher, things in my life just ain't like they all be. Boy, I sure need Lord's help on me. You just lift your hand up this morning. God bless you. Thank you for being honest. Thank you for being honest. Somebody else just slip it up right back there. Hey, I want to say it. I want you to. Oh, thank you for being honest. Thank you for being honest. Well, I just want to say this morning right there. He's faithful. Same one that loves you. Same one that died for you. Same one that saved you. Help you where you're at this morning. This altar is open. Please come while she's playing. <coughs> oh, he can fix it. He can fix it. He's faithful. Though we may be unfaithful, thank God he is faithful this morning. Father in heaven, as we come before you, Lord, I just want to tell you I love you this morning. Lord, I want to thank you for being faithful. Lord, I'm glad in I ever see it. Thank God you've been faithful. Thank God in my salvation. Oh, Lord, thank you for being faithful. Lord, I'm glad in every sickness, Lord. Lord, every sickness that I've ever had, Lord, my family's ever had. Lord, I've ever seen as a pastor. Lord, I'm going to thank you that you've been faithful. Oh, Lord, but thank you for every storm. God, that we've ever faced, Lord, thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being faithful. Lord, I know this morning, no matter what the needs may be, God, whether it's in this altar or in those pews this morning, I'm glad you're still faithful this morning. Lord, I pray that you'd meet the needs of your people. Those that need you this morning, let them be honest with you. Lord, that they may find out about the faithfulness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. These things we pray and ask in his name. Thank you. 